Hi, this is Chris Weesey. After our video on standard setting, I was perusing comments on the web, and I realized my comments about equating seemed to cause some confusion. So today, I want to attempt to clear some of that up. We put on a global exam multiple times per year on multiple days each administration. Everyone, us included, tends to refer to the exam as a single thing. But for the sake of exam security, we don't just use one version of the exam. There are many versions of the exam. So how do we make sure no one who happened to receive a slightly harder or a slightly easier version of the exam was disadvantaged or advantaged by that? This is where equating comes in. Test equating is a statistical process to maintain comparable scores on different test versions both within and across our administrations. It's analogous to converting degrees of Celsius with degrees of Fahrenheit by translating the temperature from one scale to another. We do similar with our minimum passing score. We use equating to apply the approved minimum passing score difficulty level from standard setting to future administrations. The result allows a direct comparison of two or more different exam forms, with a form being a version of the exam. It helps us see where the pass-fail line should be found on an apples-to-apples -apples basis, despite slight differences in the difficulty level across different versions of the test. Here is a simple example to try and explain another way. This is a hypothetical nine-question test. The slightly harder version of the test has three hard questions, three medium, and three easy questions. The slightly easier version of the test has two hard questions, three medium, and four easy questions. If the slightly harder version of the test was used in standard setting, then that minimum passing score effectively becomes our benchmark. Later, when we administer the other version of the exam, the basic effect of equating is to have shifted the whole scale slightly on the slightly easier exam. For example, if the MPS was four on the harder version of the exam, in other words, candidates needed to get four questions right to pass, then when we take the slightly easier exam form, you might expect them to get five or even six of those questions correct. And that's why we adjust the scale. As it's depicted here, candidates now need to get five questions right in order to pass. If we administered these two tests to a lot of people, they are unlikely to have scored exactly the same way because different people took each version. But we would know we got the equating right if the pass rates between the two groups is approximately equal, despite one version of the test being slightly easier. As I mentioned in the previous video, we use standard setting to set a benchmark MPS or difficulty level. Standard setting is not done every administration. The most common trigger for when we do hold standard setting is when there have been significant changes to the curriculum. But another possible trigger, and one that I referred to in the previous video, and that seems to have caused some confusion, relates to material changes among the candidate population. And I think the best way I can explain that is with a real world example. A few years ago, we changed our CIPM program such that CFA charter holders were waived out of completing level one and could proceed directly to level two. That had the immediate effect of taking a lot of very qualified people out of that level one testing pool. And so we did standard setting again in order to affirm the correct placement of the minimum passing score. If we had not done standard setting, then we would not have been in the position to definitively say how much of any performance differences before or after that change were based on differences on the exam versus the average capability differences between those two groups of candidates. In future videos, we're planning to cover topics such as key candidate success factors and how to respond well to the essay portion of level three. So if you haven't already, please consider subscribing so you don't miss these and other videos to come.